good morning everyone another beautiful sunrise here in Ontario Canada the chickens have been crowing since 4 a.m. telling me to get up let's get to work Good morning. I'm so glad to have you back. Let's grab the next one. Still MS211. Let's get her on the bench. Good morning and welcome back to my workbench. Today we have this Still MS211. The customer says that it runs, but that it won't keep running. So we're going to find out what the problem is. First thing I'm going to do is take a look in the fuel tank. Take that off. Whoa, that stinks. Somebody's already dumped the fuel out of this. There's a little bit down there. I'll see if I can get it out. I don't see any water in it, just some dirt. I'll just put that in there. Okay, well, I guess I'll put some fresh fuel in it and take it outside and see if I can get it to start. She says it will run. So let's give it a try. I'll just verify that the chain brake is working. Let's go outside and try to start it. See if it'll run for us. I'll see you out there. back in from taking this 211 out for a little test. It was heavily flooded. That's what all that smoke was when I started it. It has an unstable idle and most times the chain won't stop turning at idle. It just spins all the time. Very poor acceleration and then it bogs and just quits. While I was out there, I also noticed there was fuel leaking from the fuel cap. And then I got back in here and I see a puddle on my bench. So the, the O-ring in this cap is leaking. When a saw has sat around with old nasty fuel in it, 
all the rubber parts will start to break down. The O-ring, there's an O-ring on this fuel cap and it's obviously has something wrong with it. That's a good indicator that I'm going to find some more fuel related issues here. I know I could just take this saw out and adjust the high and low jets and make it run okay. But all I would be doing is compensating for a problem and I don't like doing that. I want to find out what the problem is. And now my other issue here is the replacement value of this saw. Um, it's not a real valuable saw, so it doesn't leave me room to do a lot to this. For video purposes, for educational purposes, and out of curiosity, I'm going to find out exactly what's wrong with this chainsaw. Let's get to it. I'm going to get the fuel out of the saw and I'm going to pull the bar and chain off of it. So just some quick observations here. The bar and chain look almost new. The chain's very sharp. I don't know if it's just lightly used or new. Looks like we don't have an oiling issue. This is what you want to see when you see wet sawdust. That's a good sign the saw is oiling. Some oil around the muffler and the spark arrestor is missing. I'm going to pull the cover off and we're going to have a look at the air filter and the spark plug. Okay. The air filter looks like new. Sometimes when a saw comes in with a running issue, if you find a, like a brand new air filter in it, that's a sign that someone's tried a few things before dropping it off. Take this air filter off. So it looks new, but there's a weird discoloration on the bottom of it here, like the color of like mixed gas kind of. Okay, so that spark plug is new. Somebody has obviously been attempting a repair here. They didn't mention it when they dropped it off, but uh, a new air filter or a very well cleaned air filter, I think it's new, a new spark plug. The spark arrestor is just missing. So now I get to piece this puzzle together. Let's get the camera out and take a look down the spark plug hole. Okay, I've got this chainsaw bent over, ready for inspection. Here you're seeing some carbon buildup on top of the piston. The cylinder walls, those sideways marks, that's factory cross hatching. That's supposed to be there. It's kind of hard to see, but on the cylinder walls, you can kind of see a little bit of up and down scoring. That's some very light scoring. If this saw, if they would have continued to push this saw and try to make it work by feathering, they eventually would have destroyed the piston and cylinder in this. Next, let's do everyone's favorite, a compression test. I have my echo compression tester here and I have my adapter in the spark plug hole because this saw has a smaller spark plug. It's like about 100 PSI. This saw is a 35 cc. I'm told that a saw of this size needs 80 PSI of compression to run. So it's not a compression issue that's making the saw run this way. It's more than likely a fuel issue or it's an air leak, but I'm leaning towards a fuel issue. But we're going to find out for sure. Next, let's do a fuel system check.
I'm going to use my pressure vac tool. I'm going to hook up to the fuel line and I'm going to pressurize the fuel line and the carburetor to look for leaks. Got my pressure vac tool here. I'm going to hook up to the fuel line. I'm going to make sure I'm set to pressure, which I am. And then I'm going to slowly put, go pump it up to 0.7 bar. It's not holding because it's leaking at my junction. So I can't test this fuel line because this fuel line is um, too jelly-like. It's rotten from the fuel, so I can't even get a good connection here. So I won't be doing this test. As I said earlier about the fuel cap O-ring being um, ruined from fuel, the fuel line is also ruined. It's going to be hard for me to show you this, but the fuel line, it's, it's just like jelly. So everything I'm seeing here points towards a fuel issue, but I have seen this happen. I've seen a saw come in in this condition with everything rubber just rotten from fuel and you jump to the conclusion that it's a fuel issue. But a year prior, the saw had an air leak and someone set it down with fuel in it. Someone else came along and picked the saw up, took it to a shop, and you would assume that it was a fuel issue, but there was a issue a year ago, maybe an air leak, if that makes any sense. So jumping to conclusions, it's easy to say it's fuel, but I want to be sure. I highly doubt this saw has an air leak, but I'm going to go ahead and do a full pressure vac test to rule it out, and then we'll move on to the carburetor. Let's take the muffler off this saw. Gone. T27, two of them. Do you want to have a look in the exhaust port? I'll put my camera in there and we'll have a peek in there. I'm going to plug the exhaust port up. I've got my adapter here and the rubber that I will use to seal it off. And I'm going to use my two original muffler bolts. I'll put my spark plug back in now. Next, we'll take the air filter base off. There's a couple eight mils in there. And there's a couple T27s, actually maybe three T27s. Top left one loose. When I remove this, the top left screw was not even tightened down. And now that I have the carburetor exposed here, the high jet, the limiter cap is gone, and there's been a screwdriver jammed in it. 
just a little recap to where we are right now. The saw came in and all the owner said was it won't run properly. That's it. So, so far we've found there was no fuel in the tank. The cap is leaking. The fuel line is rotten. The air filter's new. The spark plug's new. The spark arrestor's missing. This wasn't fastened down properly and the carb has been tampered with. I wonder what else we'll find. Well, I guess it's time for lunch. So I'll go do that and then I'll come back and we'll do a pressure vac test on this. Let's take the carb off this. I'm gonna remove the choke rod first. Carburetor off. I'm going to pressure vac test the fuel tank. So this cap leaks, we know that. So I'm gonna put a new cap on it for testing purposes. And I'm gonna show you the old cap and a new cap and what the fuel has done. So a new cap, can you see that O-ring right there? It's tight, it just fits there, it doesn't jiggle around. The old cap, you see how loose that is? That's all distorted from, from that nasty fuel it's been sitting in. And that's why this tank is leaking. So I'll fit this with a new cap for now. And put this old cap off the side here. So we're going to pressurize this. And then we'll do a vac test to test that the tank vent is working. Got my pressure vac tool here. So I'm going to hook up... To the fuel line. So I'm going to make sure I'm on pressure. I'm going to pump up to 0.5 of a bar for 20 seconds. This test will tell us if the, um, the top half of the fuel, fuel line has a leak in it. Looks like it's holding. So that test told us that the upper half of the fuel line, the exposed part of the fuel line is not leaking. It also told us that the tank vent and line are not leaking and that our replacement cap did seal it up. Now we'll move on and do a vacuum test. I'm gonna move this over to vacuum now. And we're going to test to make sure the tank vent is working properly. So when I pump this, it should not hold vacuum. Which it's not, and I can hear it. The tank vent is working. Let's move on now to the pressure vac test of the engine. I'm gonna seal up my intake. I've got my tool here, this is from Still. So this is gonna seal up my intake, my impulse, and my straddle port. Slide on there, push it in. I've got two washers I put on first, just to protect my tool from getting chewed up. Okay, so this side is all sealed up. We've got our spark plug in, so that's sealed up. There's no decompression valve on this model. Our exhaust port is all sealed up. So we're ready to go ahead with our pressure vac test now. This tool, it looks like it hasn't been used. I'll be honest, I don't pressure vac test very many MS-211s. The tests that I'm about to perform are gonna tell me if there's any air leaks in the saw. So I'm going to be looking for air leaks in the crank seals, in the intake area, um, in the crankcase. I have an example here. This is a, a clamshell saw. Here's an example of an engine out of a clamshell saw. So this is held together. That's a silicone seal there. 
So if that seal was leaking in this saw, these tests would find that too. There's your crank seals right there. Impulse line, intake boot. So we're testing all of these areas for air leaks. So what you've seen me seal up here is a spark plug hole, the intake, the impulse line, the exhaust port. So these are all manufactured holes that I've sealed up. So when we test this, if there's leaks anywhere else, we'll pick them up. If any of these smaller homeowner clamshell saws ever required splitting the engine apart to do work, it's typically not really worth it value-wise. If you work on chainsaws yourself at home, then um, you know, it could be a fun little project to split one of these apart and, and do it. But taking these to a shop, um, it's just too uh, labor intensive. You can only do so much to a chainsaw that is worth $400 Canadian. I don't know what that is in American, maybe two seventy five. dollars So other than doing basics, you know, the basic maintenance, spark plug, air filter, fuel filter, Depending on what we get into with this carburetor, or if we find any leaks, you know, it doesn't take long to exceed the value of the saw. Let's go ahead with our vacuum and pressure test. We'll do our vacuum test first, and then our pressure test. Hook up to the port here. And I'll make sure I'm on vacuum, which I am. So I'm gonna pull vacuum to half a bar. Then we're gonna watch for this to hold. If it stays still, then we're airtight. And if it moves, we don't want it to move. I don't think we have a vacuum leak. I'm just gonna pull the cord out a little bit just to rotate the flywheel. Sometimes if you have a crank seal leak, you can find it by doing this. So it's normal if the gauge bobs a little bit. If it completely goes back to zero, then we know we have a leak. This saw does not have any vacuum leaks. I will also wiggle the intake boot here a little bit, just see if we can pick something up. Doesn't look to be any vacuum leaks. Now I'm going to move over to pressure. Same thing, I'm going to pump this up to half a bar and it should hold. Okay, so if it started falling back to zero, we would know that there was air, an air leak somewhere. I'll just pull this out a little bit. See if we can find a crank seal leak. If it bobs a little bit, that's okay. Wiggle the intake boot a bit here. The saw holds pressure. So the saw does not have any vacuum leaks or any pressure leaks. So as we suspected, we've narrowed the problem down to something to do with the carburetor, but we know for sure because we went through this whole process. Now I'm going to remove my intake block and my exhaust port block, and then we'll uh, inspect and dissect that carburetor. So I've got my exhaust port unblocked. I've got my intake unblocked. That's it for the saw for now. We'll move on to the carburetor. So 
let's have a look at this carburetor. So I stepped out the door and just gave this a uh, cleaning off all the external stuff. So we're going to check these jets and see what they've got them turned to. So our jets here, the high jet is missing its limiter cap and somebody has been digging around with a screwdriver in there. So they have the high set three quarters of a turn out and they have the low set um, a turn and a quarter approximately out. That is almost bang on to the base settings. I expected to find the high jet to be way out, but I didn't. So I, I wonder, you know, what they've been doing. If they've had it in, had it out, they've been playing around with it. And obviously the saw's here now, so whatever they were doing didn't work. Let's take the metering side off the carburetor. So I can see some dirt here. This saw must have had a dirty air filter before it came here. I'm just going to peel that off. So this diaphragm, it doesn't have a lot of dirt on it, but it shouldn't have any dirt on it. The reason it does is because stills have a compensator port and that's how the dirt got in there. We'll get into what a compensator port is in another video. So this diaphragm, is clicky, distorted, crunchy. That's old ethanol fuel. Now I'm going to pressure test the needle and seat. I'm going to hook my line up to my fuel inlet. Make sure I'm on pressure. I'm going to go to 0.7 bar very slowly because it'll get there fast. Looks like it's holding. The needle and seat are not leaking. Now I'm going to unhook my tool and check the pump side. So just looking here, my little screen right there is clean. I don't see anything in it. The fuel pump is distorted. There's the gasket. Doesn't, doesn't sit flat. It's distorted. It's crispy. This is what ethanol fuel does to stuff, destroys it. I want to check the height of the metering lever. So I went ahead and peeled the gasket off. I've got my tool here to check this. So it should not catch it. It can't be too high and it can't be too low. I'm testing the height of this right here. It's definitely not too high. I think it's set perfectly. It is absolutely perfect. So 
that wasn't the problem. So I went and looked. I don't have the complete curb kit for this, but I do have, uh, I do have some of it. So I'm going to replace the diaphragm and the fuel pump. The carb is pretty clean. The um, needle and seat tested fine. The screen is clean. So I'm just going to clean this up, replace these, these couple items that are all distorted and wore out. And um, a new carburetor is $100 Canadian. So this will be much less than replacing the whole carb. And I think this saw is going to run just fine. So I went over and gave this a quick cleaning with some brake cleaner and some light air. Um, so let's get this back together. Let's put this car back together. So we'll do the diaphragm side. New gasket. The gasket goes on first. Your diaphragm goes on second. I've seen these come in for repair with these on reversed. That won't work. It has to go in this order. And we'll put our cover back on. And I've got my four screws right here. Now let's put the fuel pump side back together. Fuel pump first. And then your gasket. And then the cover, which I've cleaned. And the screw back in. So this curb is back together. So that wasn't a full curb rebuild. That was a diaphragm rebuild. Diaphragm and fuel pump. Um, the screen was clean. The needle and seat we tested and they held. So this should this should work no problem. So the old stuff here that I took out. See how distorted that is? That's the diaphragm. Just crunchy and distorted. And the fuel pump, same thing. Just all distorted. This is what ethanol fuel does. It just, just destroys everything it touches. All right, well, let's start putting the saw back together. Let's put the car back on. Reinstall the choke rod. Air filter base back on. Another piece of the air filter base. Carb nuts we'll put back on. These are eight mil. I'll use their air filter. It looks really clean. 
whether it's new or whether they cleaned it really well, I'm not sure. There's that strange discoloration on the bottom of it, but it looks good. So we'll put it back on there. Let's put the muffler back on. Got the muffler cooling plate and I drop my two muffler bolts through. So let's reattach this. The two caps out of the muffler. These just keep dirt and dirt and stuff out of there. There we go. Mufflers reinstalled. Let's put the top cover back on. Put our spark plug boot on first. I'm going to put fuel in the saw. I've already replaced the fuel filter with a new one. The fuel line needs replacing. I don't have it here, uh, but when it gets here, I will. It's, it's okay. Um, it's just a little bit having a little bit of a hard time gripping the fuel filter, but it'll work good for testing. And I'll put the bar and chain back on it. Bar and chain back on. We have fuel. Let's go outside and see how it runs. I'll meet you out there. So the still MS211 starts and runs excellent. So the culprit here was old fuel. The saw probably sat for a while unused with fuel in it, and you've seen what happened to it. So the case is closed on the MS211. I have lots of chainsaws waiting to be fixed. Let's get to them. Thank you so much for watching.